This is a response to an old Plum 99 video he did about Jordan Peterson. Let's begin with the idea of free speech. One of the concepts in free speech is it's a right. I would contend that this is not a healthy outlook on free speech. A healthier outlook on free speech would be it is an obligation. Now, I can't force you to tell me what you think, but I can encourage you to tell me what you think. And so the environment encourages free speech. So a free speech environment will encourage free exchange of ideas. So when we look specifically at our educational institutions, we are in the business, or they should be in the business, of encouraging free exchange of ideas. Not a matter, we don't want to see inhibitions to the exchange of ideas. So specifically on college campuses, we need to engage in free speech if we want the fruits that free speech can bring us. And that's the thing, there, there's a payoff here. There's an end result, there's a, a goal in mind. And so this I come back to my concept um, incorporating my ideas of artificial intelligence. And I think artificial intelligence, what I like the best about artificial intelligence is it gives us a sort of an objective way of looking at behavior. And let's see how artificial intelligence works or at least neural net artificial intelligence, what's referred to as deep learning. Primarily it's a neural net, but the rest is management stuff. But the idea is simple. DeepMind, one of the, one of the leading AI companies today, um, developed a system for playing Atari games. Now, they wanted to make it as simple as possible. So they had a, the score, they gave the computer a controller, and all they gave for information was what was on the computer screen. They didn't even tell them what was on the computer screen. So raw information. And what happens with raw information is patterns emerge by themselves. We don't need to put borders around things. Borders will naturally emerge where things are. And this is the idea that I would contend is about free speech. Why is free speech so important? It's important because we want to know what people are thinking. So we get the, a natural organic feedback process. Now, and then we can see where people are going wrong in terms of their thinking and a natural feedback correction process occurs, not through punishment, but through interaction through an actual dialogue of, well, if this is true, then X will occur. Oh, I never thought of that. We need that banter back and forth. Now, one of the things that I, I noticed in terms of um, uh, the atheist discussions online with theists, theists got more and more sophisticated with their arguments. Um, and they went to, into certain pockets, you know, their strongholds of... Um, what is commonly referred to as um, God of the Gaps. Uh, and there are some people that really did a good job of arguing it. Now, I was looking just purely at their art arguments and how they were formulating the arguments and the strengths of their art arguments. Now, it takes time to understand why that's a strong argument, but their arguments became more complicated with the interaction with atheists. And I think they realized that. And so they wanted those conversations with atheists because it helped them get stronger arguments overall. And atheists had to reformulate their arguments to compete with the new arguments that were emerging, presuppositional arg uh, arguments. Now, that's a fascinating subject in and of itself. But how that is, how you converse with that is on many different levels. You identify the emotional aspects of something, you identify the logical aspects of it, and then you analyze the empirical aspects of it. You can break a problem down into many different areas. What is the actual intent of the conversation? 
what is a ramification of the language of the conversation, we could argue too, but I think we're too invested in actual words and not invested enough into actual ideas, the consequences of those ideas. Um, and this is where we get bogged down into labels. So you would look at, one, in one sense, DeepMind had no labels to work with. It had no labels, and yet it was still quite capable of being very effective at that game. So people's arguments that we need labels is kind of undermined. Labels will naturally emerge. And in fact, we can look at social justice warriors as an emergent label to describe a behavior that we see emerging in a specific group of people. Or we could say the same of an atheistic behavior or a godlike behavior within an atheistic community, belief structures that emerge. And these are emergent properties. Um, it turns out objects within information are emergent. They will just emerge. You don't need to identify them directly. They will pop out at you eventually. And you'll want to put a label on it because you'll say, well, that's always occurring. We'll just call that a cat or we'll call that a dog. And then we can agree, well, that, that's pretty doggy, that's pretty catty. Yep, I, I agree, that's a good definition. Um, but we're not allowing that. We're not allowing that kind of exchange to occur because we have these ideas that we need to label stuff. And labels are potentially problematic because the label doesn't necessarily mean what it says. I mean, it's obvious that you would want to put a label that says poison, you'd want to put one with says water. You know, get the two confused, you know, there could be consequences. But we're not using labels in that sense. We're using labels in the sense of, I don't want to deal with your idea, so I'm going to label it so I don't have to deal with that idea. I don't have to deal with the consequences of my idea. So I'm going to label your idea misogynistic, racist, and now I don't have to deal with it anymore. I just put it in that box and it goes away. Well, that's worked up into a point, and that point is now. Now we're realizing that we have the capacity to fight back, to say, look, we just want a conversation. We're not trying to tell you where we should go or what we should do with our lives or how we should spend our money. We're just asking, why this way? What are the... What are the benefits of going down this road of this label game? And that's where Jordan Peterson and I obviously agree. Um, that conversation is not occurring on college campuses. Why isn't it occurring on college campuses? We should be very concerned that it's not occurring on college campuses. Now, Jordan Peterson gives an example of how his class feels as if they can't discuss what they actually think because they want to be told what to think instead. You'll have to watch Noel's video to understand more about that specific aspect and I'll link specifically to that section in my in the low bar, so specifically to that anecdotal um, behavior that Jordan saw. We're dealing with some pretty serious stuff here. Um, and we need to realize that this platform, the YouTube platform, the social media platform, is where these things are going to be resolved in the future. We haven't got there yet. And a part of it is each one of you listening or any involved in this conversation is becoming a part of the solution. Ultimately, the communication pathways have to be created. And they don't really exist yet. But they are being created by people like Noel Plum 99. He is engaging at a low enough level that we can see some the questions that need to be asked. So don't take it lightly. This is a serious thing. And it, the importance of you, the viewer, as another YouTuber, uh, as, as another commenter, is important. That's where conversations begin. They begin here. And we refine our arguments. We refine our thinking about that issue. The level of refinement that I have occurred in the last three years is staggering to me. But I understand there has been a lot of refinement in my thinking by people like Noel Plum, by people like Sargon Akkad, like a lot of people on YouTube 
continually refine my thinking about an issue. And there's not an end to that. We can continue to refine that argument. Maybe we'll find superstructures, really good ideas within that. But it begins with clear communications of our ideas, as free of our biases as we know how. And allowing our biases to exist and know that the people that we receive this information know how to sort through our biases and not assume that people can't see through our biases. They can't un understand. Yeah, I think he's being influenced by this. Now, I have addressed Thunderfoot in some of my videos or use him as an example of bias as a good thing. We all have biases.